kicking things off with Ari Lax, who you just mentioned a minute ago. I love this because we got to see him navigate through the first draft, and now we get the same player, right? We get to see the same player with the same proclivities go through another draft. Let's see what direction he goes. He's opening up his first pack right now. Luminous Bonds to the front. What else you got, though? Sometimes the good stuff's at the back. Sunholm Stalwart he's pulled to the, to the front as well. Yeah, that's a real and nice the one. the Storm. Nothing else great, I guess. So what do you want, threats or answers? That's the question for Ari here. Yeah, so the I answer is answers. I, I like the Luminous Bonds pick there. I think as you want to play as many of those as you can get when you're one of these uh, white aggressive decks. Command the Storm, although it's a very good removal spell, is somewhat replaceable. And uh, you know it's really only at its best in an is-it strategy. Uh, so Luminous Bonds leaves him open to uh, both Burroughs and Selesnya, which, you know, while not necessarily the strongest guilds by most people's standards, uh, you can end up with quite a good deck like he did last time, just a consistent deck that does the same thing every game. No fireworks out of this pack, but some reasonable choices for him here. Pulls Sonic Assault to the front. There's a Hazda Marshall. I don't think he'll be super interested in that. Locks it on Restore. Eh, Blade Instructor. Eh. I fresh like Blade Instructor. Recruit. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, I think it's either Fresh-Faced fresh Recruit or Blade Instructor. I'd be surprised by the Sonic Assault pick, but... Uh, Ooh. Oh, he almost took it. Ari, don't tease me, buddy. Do it. Yeah. All right. He takes a Sonic Assault. So a little cool. bit of a twist here. White card into blue-red. So, again, we don't really know where we're going to go yet. And Ari Lax, of course, is the type of player to stay open. Here in these for ooh wow, was that a lava coil right at the front of that pack? I think so. I think there was a lava coil and a luminous bonds. Bingo! Yeah, that's one of nice the best one. removal spells in the format. You pay two mana, they pay four, five sometimes, six even. City Watch Sphinx. See you later. No the fact trigger. that it exiles the creature too that mm -hmm. comes up quite a bit in this format. Yeah. Lava coil is just too good and. Boy, how did that happen? How did it get to him third? Somebody first picked a rare. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. Better uncommon than Lava Coil. Had to be picked over. Murmuring Mystic. Okay. Uh, maybe that somebody just picked uh, you know, a white card and then a white card, and then they took a white card. Although yeah. there was a Luminous Bonds there, too. <laughs> I've, got an, I've got another theory. Maybe somebody was just wrong. That's always a possibility. True Fire Captain. Now, I... I a little glint there from Ari. He saw the Piston Fist Cyclops, and he was like, ooh. And then, but then, he, boom, he got to True Fire Captain, and he figures, all right, well, we've got ourselves a real, uh, a real signal here. Yeah, and that's a very high-powered uncommon. You know, four-power creature in Mentor is nothing to scoff at. The fact that it only costs four mana uh, with some Guild Gates, this is a pretty consistent turn four play uh, from these decks. And just having that extra reach, being able to deal your opponent damage... Uh, whenever it's dealt damage, that's really good when you're a Burroughs deck. Parhelion Patrol looks to be the most desirable card out of this pack. Electrostatic Field, not where you want to be when you're Boros. Not at all. I mean, it's also worth noting, though, that he's not necessarily committed to Burroughs at this point. Interesting, you're right. I was kind of thinking he was when he took the True Fire Captain. I mean, that's a very committing pick, right? Yeah, I mean, he doesn't have to play the True Fire Captain just yet, though. He, yeah. And he could splash the Luminous Bonds quite easily. Okay. So he, we may see Is It with the Luminous Bonds, depending on how these next packs, packs go. He's got a Gird for Battle pulled to the front, and he's going to take that. All right, now are we starting to think he's more committed? Yeah, yeah the, the Gird for Battle tells me that Ari wants to be picking up Healer's Hawks. Ari loves himself some healers. Hawks. Boy, he does. You know, in the last draft, we saw him win a lot of games simply by building a Bane Slayer Angel out of Healer's Hawks. Something I even talked about yesterday. It's one of the I, something I just tried, and I ended up winning in the draft on Magic Online. So this is a strategy that Ari already knows about. Clearly, uh, I'm sure a lot of people in the room have not done it yet, have not seen it yet. There's an Is It Guild Gate pulled to the front now for Lux. By the way, that dude yelling behind us, there's no microphone on that guy. That's Rob Castellan, one of our judges here. He's just, he's got pipes. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good way to put it. Is it Gilgate was a pickup there for Lax? 
His invitational card is Militia Bugler. <laughs> I guess so. There's your boy. Yeah, Wojcik Bodyguard. Bodyguard. We know you love that one. I love that one, too. Yeah, it's a card that I did not think I would love when I read it. Me too. And uh, then having gotten to play with it, I've been really impressed with its synergy alongside things like Sky Knight Legionnaire. Uh, and your Hawk. Yeah, it works really nicely with the Hawk. And uh, it's clear that Ari really likes growing flyers that start mm -hmm. with a small amount of power. Yeah, the, the, the real key, though, right, like the thing that you just simply cannot ignore, by the way, back onto Is It Now, is with Wojak Bodyguard is you got to have a high enough creature count. You just can't run cards like that and find yourself where they go, remove a creature, remove a creature, leave your bodyguard by itself. Now it's just a, you know, it, it turns all their removal spells into a two for one if you don't have enough. Blade Instructor. Yeah, pretty late Blade Instructor there. And uh, Ari seems to kind of be settling into a uh, full-blown Jeskai guy. Jeskai? Yeah, uh, he has one gate now. Uh, we've been seeing Burrow skill gates go pretty late. Tell you what, that would make me a little nervous. Caller the culprit or a Vernati shield mate is going to go for the shield mate. That curve rolling. I'm really curious. I, I feel like he's leaning more towards Boros. Can he really just do both? Uh, it's like, doesn't absolutely your mana possible just get to too do both? sketchy for that? Um, it, it's hard to be a three-color aggressive deck in this format, though, and have your deck work as you'd like it to. Right. Sure, Book Devourer, why not? It's got Big. It's got Trample. The Dev Guardian. The Dev Guardian, been a little disappointing. Yeah, it's a sideboard card where you're playing against Burroughs, essentially. Like, if you are a Burroughs deck and you have this in your board, it's usually good to bring it in against other Burroughs decks. So I'm really curious to see where this goes, because, again, my inclination from this point is that I would just be thinking I'm in Boros. I Sure, I picked up a Leapfrog, I have a Sonic Assault, but I really feel like his Boros shell is much stronger, and I just don't know if I want to mess it up with these uh, Guild Gates and trying to splash around. Yeah, and I mean, it, so he really only has, like, five creatures, maybe six if you count the two four. Oh. Um, yeah. Four, even. Um, not a ton of playables here, but again, he was he was teetering back and forth. He wasn't really sure where he was going to be uh, throughout this first pack. There were signals that told him to go into Is it? Uh, then there were signals telling him to go back into Burrows. Uh, I think at this point it looks like he'd much rather be Burrows, but he does have the escape hatch of being a three-color Is it deck, and having that Is it Guildgate also gives him some potential to splash if he's able to open something really powerful. Okay, let's see how this thing shapes up here as pack number two just about upon us here for Ari Lax. We're in draft number two here in Montreal, and that means that uh, we've got this draft, three rounds to play, and then we're cutting to a top eight, so hopefully you'll be able to hang around with us. There's a hammer dropper, a shield mate, an ornery goblin, skyline scout, and there was a hypothesis sizzle in the pack as well. So this is kind of the point where he decides, right? If he takes the hypothesis sizzle, clearly the most powerful card in the pack, um, then he's he's going to be Izzet or Jeskai. Uh, but you want a lot of two drops of your Burrows. Ornery Goblin, I think, is is definitely the right two drop there. I've, I've been pretty impressed with the triggered ability on that card. Me too. And this does give us a major hint at what Ari's thinking as well. He thinks he's Boros. Aggro curve deck. He did that last time, actually. Same, same thing. He had an aggro curve deck with Celestia. And this Ornery. time, though, this is where you want to be. Yeah. If you want to curve out and beat people down, you got the tools to get the job done here in Boros. Okay, he finds a Rubble Belt Boar. And Rubble Belt Boar, uh, you know, a card with that text would be good in just about any limited format. It would be a very reasonable card. But uh, in this limited format, it becomes a little bit better because you can pump up creatures that have Mentor and make other creatures larger even when they would otherwise not be receiving that extra counter. Yeah, really good in the Boros deck too, right? It just adds to your board while allowing attacks or getting in for more damage than you might normally. And also it's worth noting that when you're playing Boros, people often pass the turn 
after tapping out with blockers that are set up so that they're of the correct power and toughness in order to defend properly. And Rolled Belt Boar can throw off that math quite a bit. Also, uh, you know, a little bit of foresight there in the flavor text, talking about the gruel. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Okay, he's got the Bargent, the Bargent Sergeant. There's a Hazda Marshall if he really wants to get that curve down low. Though, you and I saw our first successful Hazda Marshall yesterday. Took, <laughs> took a while in the format before we saw the thing go off. Yeah, I've not been impressed with Marshall. Uh, Sergeant's fine. I, I'm you mean with Hazda Marshall, right? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't think there was really anything exciting for him in that pack. But I mean, uh, there's, there's other Marshalls here, I'm just saying. <laughs> Some of them more impressive than others. <laughs> you're you're a much more impressive Mar Marshall than Hasda Marshall. I don't even have a sword like anywhere near <laughs> though. I mean, come on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, his, his best friend. And oh, uh, Healer's Hawk. No, I was talking about Marshall. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. like what Maria did. <laughs> Speaking of best friends, though, Ari Lax loves a Healer's Hawk. Is it carrying medicine? Oh. I didn't even realize that. I thought it just like, had a, a light on it so that people didn't act. Is it people didn't accidentally run into it with their little planes? You oh. know. <laughs> just no, I think it's medicine. The wounded see the glow of its vials long before they see its wings diving out of the clouds. Oh, it's nice. It's a nice hawk. Although it's killed a lot of people this weekend. <laughs> yeah, it has. So I don't know if I believe that fully. By the way, this pack's been kind of a stinker here for Ari. Yeah, real, real stinky. Just like no great stuff and a bunch of mediocre filler that he's picked up. I mean, some of the stuff will make the cut. It wasn't. It's not a complete disaster. But you know, think of the stuff you can get when you're in Boros, right? There's all these gold cards, two drops. It's rare, uncommons, commons, Sky Knight Legionnaire, another True Fire. Kit, none of it. Just Zippo. Yeah, and a lot of these picks that we've seen over the last few packs i mean these are the first five those were the first five packs of pack two and we saw him taking you know things like intrusive pack beast and worst good and god those rarely even make the cut when i'm playing bros fearless halberdier or torch courier is the choice Ugh. i think that already played enough flavor text only creatures in his last draft but maybe i'm wrong he's got the halberdier here particularly poorly positioned in the format Hard to put a mentor counter on the thing. Doesn't have mentor itself. Almost always trades down. Trades down most of the time. And a bunch of bricks here, too. This second candlelight vigil, I, I don't even know if he'll start it. We saw him bring it in out of the sideboard in a Celestia deck. He might have to. But he may have to play a couple of these and hope to just get there. It's a risky proposition, but unless pack three really rewards Ari here, he could be in that type of position. It's getting pretty bad. Also worth noting, though, you know, we're used to drafting on Magic Online these days where you're not necessarily playing your matches against the people you're drafting with. The quality of these packs has been incredibly low. Good point. So, you know, the people around him, it's not like they're getting, you know, the people he's playing against aren't necessarily going to have great decks because we're just watching people open pretty bad packs. And, uh, you know, unless those, those rares, those uncommons that people took with their first couple picks were particularly good, uh, you have to remember that the other people are still, you know, picking from the stinky pile that Ari's picking from. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a relative situation, that's right. All right, Vernadi Shield Mate, he'll be pretty happy to pick up something that's playable. Yeah, it's like his best card of this pack so far. Might be. <laughs> it might be. I mean, his, even his first few picks weren't very strong. No, they weren't. Wow, that's some flavor text on that shield, mate. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, third candlelight vigil. I mean, there's no way you're playing three candlelight vigil, right? Don't you just take the watery grave? <laughs> just for the old trade binder? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Tenth district guard. Adds to the pile of Ari Lax's mediocre, but playable two drops. His curve certainly looks reasonable here after picking a bunch of twos and ones in this pack, but boy, raw power level added to his deck. Very low. He's got yeah. a lot of work to do in the third pack if he's going to have a great deck, though as you mentioned, he may not need one to defeat his opponents here because there's so, so few great cards going in either direction. 
It's also worth noting that he, because he has those three candlelight vigils and his overall power level of his deck is so low, um, we're probably going to see him, and I, we would already see him taking a card like Healer's Hawk very high because of the way he likes to draft in this format based on the two drafts we've seen. But I imagine he's going to be taking Healer's Hawk over significantly more powerful cards uh, because of those candlelight vigils because he might be in a place where he really has to play them. <coughs> Vigorous Spore Worm, last pick for somebody. <coughs> and the Wish Coin Crab there. Goes last for Ari here in pack number two. So let's, let's get a look at how he sorts this thing out. He's going to have, like I said, a good curve of creatures. But having picked up effectively nothing great, you know, removal-wise, bomb-wise, even just strong and common-wise out of that pack, oof, it's going to be tough. Yeah, uh, something we're seeing happening here is uh, after that first draft, uh, people around the room, the buzz in the hall, if you will, is that the people who won their first drafts were overwhelmingly playing blue cards. And coming into this draft, coming into this draft all over the room, not just at table one, people were thinking to themselves, I want to be the blue player. The blue player 3 0 my last pod. And when that happens, you know, it's self-correcting. This is magic. Suddenly there are no good blue cards going around. And blue cards, you know, they pair well with red cards. So we've seen Ari have a lot of this red dry up. He saw that early lava coil. But besides that, you know, he doesn't really have a ton of great red cards. He hasn't seen a lot of them. Uh, you know, this might have been the the draft where Selesnio is the place to be. Because I think if you're looking around the room, people want to be Demir. People want to be Izzet. Those were the decks that 3 0 the last draft all over the room. Mm hmm Look at him. Look at him open up pack three. He wants it. He's like, come on. Please. Something great. Give me a venerated Loxodon. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be good in his deck. Aurelia? That'd be real nice. How about Aurelia? That'll make up for pack number two. Yeah, that would make up quite cleanly make up for it quite a bit. Spy bug? No, 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 no. Hammer dropper, and he's just gonna windmill slam a sure strike. Boy, uh. <laughs> and you know I gotta say again, you know the way that Ari, like his body language there is just like ugh, right? Like yeah. he's just like fine, I'll take a sure strike. I need these type of cards, and I mean again, it's not that. It's not that, like, Sure Strike's actually quite good. It's, it's a totally good combat trick, but it's not what you want to pick up here, right? Pack one, pick one. That's reserved for the bombs, the removal, the premium uncommons. Not okay combat tricks. Yeah, Sure Strike, the type of card that's usually very replaceable. The thing is that Ari's fighting for playables here. He needs yeah. to have a deck that he could actually bring to war, and lots of hypotheses is going through him. Okay, Rock Charger. And he's just going to take it here. So staying on plan. Best card was Crackling Drake out of the pack. Yeah. And Hypothesizzle. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe Ari with a little twinge of maybe I could have. But realistically, he couldn't have. Like, yeah, it he, just, it he wasn't tried really there. to dip he tried. into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, it just hasn't been there. He, was test he tested the waters, and the waters didn't tell him that it was safe you know a crocodile came out and snapped at him yeah he said all right fine and then suddenly all the all the, the water was fine there was delicious food floating around and i it. wouldn't say that it was more like <laughs> leftovers because you know he's got a okay deck going but man all right let's see what he's got here there's a beacon bolt going by another sure strike Ugh. Oh, Goblin Banneret. Okay, I didn't see that one at the front of the pack, but that's a nice one. That's actually a good pickup for his deck. Yeah, I, I've been pretty impressed with this card. Uh, it's almost always trading with something because of the pump ability, and uh, while it's trading with one of your opponent's creatures, it's also dropping a plus, <coughs> plus one counter on your hawk. That's right. Also, mana sink late if you manage to keep the board completely clear. Doesn't happen often, right? Yeah, the it, it works really well with his rock charger. There you go. That's a good one. Also... Pretty good if, they, if they're playing some walls, you know, some zero toughness wall. You just, hey, attack with this goblin banner at, you yeah. know. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? OK, 
Okay, so Ari's choice here is Skyline Scout, Guildgate, or Rebel Belt Boar. I think I like the boar. Um, I think Ari's probably going to end up taking the two, though. <laughs> he does love himself a two drop. Yeah. Yeah, th this is also a curve pick, and Ari will have it in his head about what he wants. I mean, in a vacuum for these type of decks, you should just take the two, right? I think so. More yeah. often than not, the two's correct. Right, but he, he actually does have a lot of them, mm -hmm. and Rubble Belt Boar helps out your twos, especially when they're kind of not the best cards. So. Yeah. <coughs> okay, found a removal spell here, Command the Storm. Yeah, I'd be really surprised if he didn't just take that right away. Yeah, he's, a, he's pretty darn light on removal. I think he views that sure strike that he took first pick here as a removal spell as well. He doesn't really have a lot of ways to get creatures out of the way, so he's going to have to just brute force through with these combat tricks and such. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Paraluminous Bonds, right? It, was it one? I thought it was one. Did he pick up another? If he picked up another, then I'm feeling a bit better. He first picked the one. Mm -hmm. That's the only one I remember offhand. Chad, did he, did he get a second Luminous Bonds, or was it just the one? Ooh! That's Inescapable nice. Blaze. Oh my goodness gracious. And Whoa. an Experimental Frenzy. Yay. I think you have to take the Experimental Frenzy. I Finally a choice for, yeah. <laughs> for Ari Lax. He has to make a choice. I mean, I, I'm not sure if he's got an opportunity to play with it. It's a card that, you know, is not as obviously good as, you know, one might think it would be. But when you play with that card, oh my goodness gracious. Chad says he ended up just with the one. Uh, okay. The pack that had the second one had Lava Coil. Oh, you're right. You're play. right. Okay. And that that well, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> Chat, chat's right. They're all over it. They They're have my back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I got all Thank the you. answers. That experimental frenzy honestly takes this deck from like <laughs> uh, a bottom of the barrel like nightmare to yeah. like a pretty reasonable kind of a game plan. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> like really if he does. draws that card, it's really hard to lose, it right? It is. It's insane because he's drafted so many cheap spells to just dump his hand. Another command the storm, or do you want another ornery goblin? No, he wants a second command the storm with authority there from Arielax. Yeah, I mean he he just took a maniacal rage over another two drop. So at this point, I think he's. He's thinking. He feels like he's got enough Vernadi shield mates to, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to tide him over. <laughs> to introduce his opponent's creatures to the soil repeatedly via sure strike. <laughs> <laughs> to the, to the <laughs> 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 Indeed. Oh my god. Ooh. Okay, hammer dropper's fine, but boy, Hypothesis will still in the pack? Yeah, he does have an Is It Guildgate, so it's, I guess it's possible to splash, but you don't want to be splashing when you're Burroughs. Nah. He's looking at the Torch Courier, and again, you know, he's just going to cut a Prey Upon, though. I think he realizes that there's nothing really playable for him there anyway, and his deck is pretty well curved out. It is interesting, though, that he does want to now, I mean, he already wanted to have a low curve deck, uh, basically as low as he could get it. Now he's even more incentivized to do so because of that Experimental Frenzy, the ability to simply dump your hand. You know, it's like a like a yo-yo, right? Like you're just like yeah. dump it down and then boom, you're just going right back up in the other direction once you hit the bottom by casting that frenzy as the last card out of your hand and going off. Because the cheaper your spells, the more of them you can cast in those windows when you get to do it. When you have an expensive spell, it can just stop the proceedings right then and there. You have to wait to draw it and then hope to get it going again the next turn. That's definitely true. These last picks have actually been somewhat interesting for Ari. You, mm. you know, sometimes these are kind of throwaway picks, if you will. Mm. But w if you notice, he's taken things like wishbone crabs. He's taken inexpensive creatures. What he's trying to do is he's trying to make the people around him have decks that are worse against his. He's slowing down the decks around him in an effort to get in underneath their more powerful cards. Right, and taking away perhaps sideboard cards or just cards. Like, wishbone crabs actually annoying. Yeah, if you're Burroughs, that card's good against you. People are going to be mm -hmm. sideboarding that in against you, or they should be at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're taking a break. Okay, we're just going to take a short commercial break here, and we've got more drafts to bring you. That was the first one. We're going to bring you a total of three here during this stretch. So take a quick break. When we come back, more drafting here from GP Montreal. We'll see you in just a few. <laughs> 